Joining us now with more on the Mueller team releasing Flynn's interview document is the author of The Russia Hoax, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, and Fox News contributor Sarah Carter. All right, guys, I'm excited to be doing this. Here we've got just released the new 302. We didn't even know if there was a 302 because on Wednesday when Judge Sullivan ordered that it be turned in on Friday, we didn't get it on Friday, but we get it today. It's heavily redacted. And a 302 for the viewers, just so you know, is basically the interview of an individual that is that is turned into a report, a 302. It is supposed to be done uh, uh, contemporaneously with the report. Now, what we have here is we now have a version of uh, the January 24th uh, interview of Michael Flynn uh, signed February, one version in May, and then we've got one version in August. Greg, which one do you believe? Well, I think you have to look at the very first one. Uh, usually the first is the most authentic and honest. And it clearly states that these FBI agents who interviewed Michael Flynn determined that he was telling the truth, that he wasn't lying. But, you know, these prosecutors, Mueller's prosecutors, tried to pull a fast one on this federal judge, Emmett Sullivan. He was having none of it. Last Friday, they were supposed to hand over these documents. They hid, deliberately hid the 302 from the judge. He noticed it, and he issued a minute order today saying, turn over that document. So that puts, that's a red flag for the judge. It puts him on alert. During tomorrow's hearing, he may say, why did you hide that document from me? Well, not only did they hide it, but they defied his order and didn't turn it in on That's Friday. Right. If you and, and I did that, we'd be in contempt. Uh, well, it, it, definitely. Someone would be in contempt. And, and I'll go to you, Sarah. You know, when Mueller withholds the 302, which is the essence of the, the, the statement that Flynn made, which is the basis of his, his lying, or as the Fed see it, but as they see mm -hmm. it, to be honest with you, they said he really wasn't lying. So what we have here... Here is a judge who tomorrow has a decision to make. He can vacate the plea or he can allow the sentence to go through, which the prosecution is recommending no time. Well, I think Judge Sullivan is not just going to sit back and allow uh, Mueller and the special counsel to walk all over him. I think he's definitely going to make a statement. I also want to say, um, Judge Janine, that they didn't turn in the raw notes. That is the raw notes from the FBI agent, uh, Joe Pianca, who was the other agent who interviewed Flynn. And that's extremely important because a lot of times, and I was talking to Sidney Powell about this, a lot of times the raw material those raw notes are drastically different from the 302s. So the judge is going to want to compare the raw notes of the FBI agents with these 302s. And remember, 302s should be done within five days. Why were these 302s, well, there's three of them, why were they done consecutively and so far <laughs> apart? And, and I, I'll give you an example of how it's supposed to be done. Hillary Clinton was interviewed on July 2nd of 2016. Her 302 was done that day. Now we have three 302s that they tried to hide from the judge, that they redacted heavily, and we don't know which one is the accurate one. And there's something that stinks in River City. And this judge knows it, and he has deep experience experience Indeed. with prosecutors who uh, lie, deceive, hide exculpatory evidence, and phony up false evidence. It happened in the T Ted Stevens case. Right. This judge was presiding. So, you know, he, look, these are prosecutors who don't care about justice and the truth. Mueller's team only cares about getting Trump and winning their cases. But this judge cares about justice and he may turn to the prosecutors tomorrow and say wait a minute look at this 302 why did you charge a guy with lying when you don't when think he, he was lie? lying not only that the judge has the authority to vacate he the does. plea that he has the authority right. to dismiss in the interest of justice but what's interesting is that Flynn did not make any of these motions the judge will have to do it sua sponte on his right. own will he and, and, and notice the judge said, don't he, he said, don't turn this over to the defense. Turn it over to me. Right. I want to see right. these documents. And the judge may actually turn to Michael Flynn and said, what happened here? Uh, if you didn't lie and the only two witnesses said you didn't lie, were you coerced and forced? Did Mueller and his team threaten your son? 
Uh, did he cause you to essentially go bankrupt and broke? Is that why you pled? But in addition to that, in addition to that, what he can say is, he can say, you know, you intentionally dissuaded him from bringing an attorney. And although this right. is not an, a custodial interrogation, which would require Miranda rights, there is a nuance here. And the nuance is when they say you don't need a lawyer uh, and when they try to talk you out of it, Sarah, Aren't they in as That's bad right. a place as if they didn't Mirandize at all? Absolutely, they are. And if you look at the 302 itself, the lie is right up at the top of this 302 because they said they notified him of the nature of this interview. And that is inaccurate. They never notified him of the nature of this interview because they asked him not to bring an attorney. And they were looking at him for possible criminal purposes. They were trying, in a sense, to entrap him because they already knew what the conversation was that he had with Ambassador Kislyak and they were going to him. So I think the judge is going to be looking at all of this. And remember one thing, Judge Janine, that there's another FBI agent here. Everybody uh, has talked about Peter Strzok. Everybody has seen what uh, Michael Flynn has had to say, but nobody has spoken to the to other the FBI one. agent. Right. Okay. And That's Rod right. Rosenstein has refused to make him available, notwithstanding right. congressional demands. What are they hiding? Oh, you, they're hiding everything. That's the way. And, and they're delaying. And, you know, I must say that, Sarah, when you talk about the, the beginning of the 302, it says, after being advised of the identities of the interviewing agents and the nature of the interview, Flynn provided the following information. So you're saying they said to him, we're looking at you to interrogate you uh, regarding <laughs> your statements. And you're saying that that didn't happen. You have information that that was not a fact. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Do you want to tell us from where? Well, the sources that I've spoken to, and I've written about this even over six months ago, uh, Judge Jeanine, when he met with those agents at the White House, he believed that he was having a conversation and providing information that was necessary, information that they would need, which is the reason why Andrew McCabe said, look, you don't even need to have an attorney there anyways. What would happen is I'd have to notify the DOJ. This is just a conversation. There was no way at that point in time, according to the sources that I've spoken with, that uh, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn thought that he was being interrogated. Well, in fact, throughout it, half of that interview, he thought that they were just having a normal conversation. Well, because McCabe and as got it on the phone and lied to Flynn about the reason exactly. for the interview. Then he pushed him not to have, oh, you don't need to have a lawyer. We don't need to involve the lawyers in right. this. And they conspired. Comey, McCabe, and Strzok, and Pienka apparently conspired not to tell Flynn they had a transcript of his very legal conversation with the Russian ambassador. But, did, but he already would know that, wouldn't he, Greg? He would know that he's speaking to Absolutely. the ambassador. Did he know that, Sarah? Absolutely he would have. Yeah. He was the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency so previously, and then he's a national security advisor. And so I think he was very well aware that phone conversations were actually being recorded, you know, of foreign adversaries. I don't think what, uh, or, or even foreign state actors, but I don't think he would have thought at any point in time that he was actually being looked at as a suspect. Because even according the, to sources, he never believed he did anything wrong. He never believed he lied. He never well, did anything, right. and he and never conspired with Russia. In addition to that, the 302 says he was colloquial and friendly. <laughs> That's you know, right. There, there it lies. Go ahead. I mean, it was such a setup. They <laughs> lied to him over it. They had a plan. Let's hurt Trump. Uh, you heard Comey bragging about it. Oh, let's take advantage of the fact that it's only three and a half days in their administration. They don't have their lawyers and all their ducks in a row. I mean, that is unconscionable. It but is. typical and we'll James see Comey. What the judge does tomorrow.